CBS uh, CEO Les Moonves is out. Uh, all reports pointed to the fact that he's going to leave without severance, and then the investigation into all the sexual allegations are go is going to um, proceed before they actually close the deal on a, I guess, an exit package for him. Okay, so this uh, broke this morning. Ronan Farrell, again, a blockbuster article after the first article. Six more women, and in a very detailed fashion, almost, I want to say, Harvey Weinstein-esque yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. allegations. So I'm going to start with my first question here. Um, do we think that he is going to get this payout? Because there's a lot of Time's Up has come out now and really um, said he should not walk away. Rachel Bloom, who's on the network, has uh, come out with a really strong tweet. He needs to get nothing and go away. Itai, what do I we think? I think she here? used the F word before that. She nothing. did, yes. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. I, I, yeah. I, you know, I have to say, when I first saw the, alleg the accusations in the first piece, I thought, ooh, this is really bad. I don't know how he's going to survive this. And I didn't think he was going to. Uh, but this is Mes Les Moonves. He's definitely one of the most powerful people in Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, one of the most, if not the most powerful person to have been accused throughout the Me Too uh, movement. So I think that's one of the reasons why he was able to sort of stay on the job for yeah. all this time. But I, I don't see how, how after these accusations, which you're right, I think they, when you read them, they definitely sound very Harvey Weinstein, well, uh, very they were vindictive, just, very, it's just He horrifying. shoved a woman against a wall. It was graphic. Her. And not even just like lower, not even just mid-level employees and underlings, but like some actually, pat, like the, the woman he worked at Lorimar with, yes, the uh, fellow executive, like, sh like shocking. Like my jaw was literally open when I was reading this. I also felt it got so graphic. Like, did we need to know that he wears Calvin Klein underwear? And where do you get them? That I, I size, think the reason really? why we need to know it is because when you report on these, no, no, there's it a reason why. When you report, yeah, yeah, when you report on these, on these, and these uh, Me Too stories, and when I've done some of the reportings on these stories, yeah. you want as many details as possible to show that th those details are what sort of makes it more credible. So. And the detail when they ask people for corroboration, in other words, and she told her husband at the time he corroborates that. Yes. Uh, lawyers definitely do that. Morel, do you th did you think when the first article came out about the allegations that he was going to survive this? I actually did, mostly because CBS has been the number one network for many, many years. They've yeah. made the most money. He chose Stephen Colbert and James Corden, who are the biggest people in their time slots. And, yeah. you know, he had Chuck Lorre, who did uh, Two Blue and a Bang half Theory men. and Two and a Half Men. Like, that guy's a moneymaker. He's made good choices. It may not be something that we necessarily want to watch. And it's always appealed to older people. CBS. Yes. They're known for that. So I thought, you know, Hollywood cares more about money than doing the right thing. Yeah. But this rise up of women, and Ronan Farrow is like a one-man band oh taking God. these people down. When I read the story today, that was the end of it. But I, yeah. I actually thought he'd survive. Maybe he'd get, you know, have to take half a year off or something like that. Yeah. No, I knew. As soon as I read that article, I think the I texted one. you. No, the I, yeah, the second okay, one. So I texted yeah. you. I told you he's not going to survive the day. I stand corrected because when we talked, I mean, I was actually, like, when the first article came, I literally thought he was going to survive it. I did. I oh, thought wow. there was going to be some way and there was going to be restitution made. Like, he's donating this much money to uh, the victim's fund. He's going to go through training. But, like, some kind of yes, break from that. But I did think he was going to survive it. The second, as soon as I read this morning, mm -mm. I was like, no way. This is done and then we were like chatting over you know about we the show. We were texting we were, I said he's not going to survive the 24 hours. He's not going to survive the day. Mm -hmm. um, what was your first reaction? My first reaction and I think we talked about it the last time you were on correct? Yes. Um, was that he wasn't going to survive the first time and then when we saw this article come out today it was like the final nail in the coffin especially having to deal with his package that was you know going to be awarded to yes. him. Awarded I guess you could say um, upon his um, departure. Um, I want to bring up, because you talked about Rachel Bloom. We yes. actually have her tweet. Yeah, let's take a look at that. So let's pull that up. She says, as an employee of CBS, I would just like to say that Les Moonves should be fired without getting a effing dollar. <laughs> yeah. The, <Nerving. laughs> exactly. The actions described in this article are those of sexual assault and shame on anyone else who in the corporation knew about his crimes. Which we know they did. Yes. Which is exactly what's yeah. going to bring me to my next thing. More troubling in the New York 
New Yorker article is that the one um, victim came forward to the LAPD months ago and they launched a criminal investigation and he told uh, quote unquote half the board members didn't tell the other half but then was kept on to run the company yep. I mean to me it's like is the board going to be shucked too because I mean what, it's oh the, there's going to be uh, there's going to be uh, there's yeah. going to be a reckoning over at CBS yeah. right now yeah. not to mention you need to understand he's been at CBS since 1995 the head of CBS since 2006 which means everyone who's on in a high position at CBS right now was put there by Les Moonves. Yes. All of them are going to see their jobs. Um, a lot of them. So is it our, our opinion? I mean, it is my opinion that they need a house cleaning yeah. like there. because Certainly even just of the board. Of the board. But then also, so um, the most recent reporting has uh, Joseph Ionello who was like a hand-picked like, um, executive from Les to take over, at least in the interim, as right. the CEO. Uh, here's the thing. Before, before these accusations, uh, everyone was talking about how Joe Ionello is very well-liked within CBS, has yeah. been at the helm of CBS, shepherding this very successful yeah. uh, uh, turn, you know, turn at CBS. They've been number one 15 out of the last 16 years. Uh, <coughs> The problem he's going to have right now is that he's too close to Les Moonves, yes. and these accusations are so bad that I don't see how he's going to survive it either. And I should mention one more thing: Julie Chen's future at CBS oh, I know. now right. in question. Yeah, I, I think agree. she's going to. She's going to resign. I think she's going to resign. She's, I don't think. I she's think they're going to. Ha they're going to give yeah. her the they're opportunity to resign that. because yeah. she's not going to be able to survive this either. And I have to tell you that whole Janet Jackson story that I'm sure we're going to be talking about. Yes. The one that broke. Uh, that Yashar broke. Yashar Ali from the Huffington Post. One of my favorite broke. reporters. There's a clip that he just resurfaced, which is uh, I encourage everyone to check it out. Uh, it's the talk they talk about. Julie Chen talks about the whole Janet Jackson fiasco. Oh, I want to see it. And mm -hmm. in that clip, she sort of mentions some of the details uh, that Yasha broke, in which she claims she talks about the whole Justin Timberlake yes. apologized, Janet Jackson did not, and that's why her career went south, whereas his. Yeah, flourished. he came back to the Super Bowl. I told you this in yeah. an email that I am writing a book with the man, his name is Wayne Scott Lucas. Okay who was the stylist that day when the wardrobe malfunction mm. happened. And oh, he, wow. the book isn't all about that. It's yeah, no, but still, okay. It's like Hollywood Babylon all over again. Yes. It's really <laughs> yeah. hilarious. But basically, it ruined his career, too. Yes. And it was all Justin Timberlake's idea. It was. It really, but well, what was supposed to show? I, I mean, so a like, piece of red fabric. Just a piece of red, and so it all came off. Oh, when but he took it off, idea. apparently it all. So we should talk about this, explain to the viewers who yeah, may not have. In a uh, yeah. Well, let me, because before yeah. we skip to the Janet Jackson, because that article yeah. was a blockbuster. <laughs> but just to back up here about the executive uh, for a second, why are they not going to hire a woman? I mean, is there any better restitution for this and like mea culpa to the entire if industry? If Nina Tesla was still there as number two, she would be taking over. It's such a it, shame that it, she left. Yeah, I mean, it's but it's just that they could bring her back. To me, this level of insanity of like put a woman in charge. Right. There's no better like idea to this like to to sort and of. And there's certainly enough really qualified women yes, who deserve that. <sighs> Nina Tesla being absolutely. That's my the top. plea to CBS. Not that you know, but it's just like hire a woman. Hire a woman well, to take this Well, let's start a campaign. Let's start Break a campaign. Yes, people exactly. have the power. It's true. Okay, so Janet Jackson. So for viewers and listeners, um, Yashira Lee, uh, reporter who writes for the New York Magazine and also Huffington Post, um, follow him on Twitter if you don't actually. Um, amazing. He, he's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, he broke a story this week that in the wake of, you know, of Janet Jackson's Super Bowl fiasco, that Les Moonves was so incensed by all of that that he set out to, like, ruin her in whatever way that he possibly could. Well, remember it cost them a lot of money that the FCC yeah, came so, down on them? Yeah, they had about half a million dollars. But the, hip the interesting part of this is now knowing that this man, assuming these allegations are all true, and, I mean, uh, it... Where there's smoke, there's fire. I think it's usually if you're up to almost 10 different, like, what are we talking oh, here? 12. 12. Um, it's to be so incensed by a woman's breast, but here, you know, you're forcibly <laughs> right. kissing women. Uh, exactly. Oh, I'm sorry, Les, you were offended by her breasts, but you no, could No, he basically... wasn't offended. He was just angry that he looked bad. Yeah, right? pretty much. But it's just, um, it, so Yashir got into the details of all that, but now, like, so you're saying that... So he, he resurfaced this clip where you see it's the talk, and you see everyone's talking about this, this, you know, uh, the, the fiasco. Yeah. And 
you can tell everyone is sort of you know it's a it's a show with about women it's sort of like the view yes <laughs> Everyone on the panel is, you know, on Janet's side. The one who's kind of like not really on her side. The only person is Julie, Julie Chen. Chen. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's only a matter of time. It's given me a very good idea to do an article. Till somebody interviews Nancy Moonves, the first wife, wife. who he was cheating on, and and probably, you know, more than she even knew. Yes. Right? Well, that's the troubling part of Me Too as a whole, I always think to myself. So everything that's reported is what we know. So know that there's more. Oh, there's that's always, always more. And that's always so more. that's what's more troubling. Like, everything we've already learned about Harvey Weinstein, mm-hmm. just add another, like, 30% of oh, I think it's much that more. we haven't learned. I, I, I yeah. think that this is these are men who have been in power for so long, and, mm-hmm. and they've gotten away with it for so long. So it starts incrementally, and to get to the point where... There's absolutely no accountability, and now yeah. you're the head of the number one network, and you have all oh, this right. power and all this home money. Fifty million a year for what? Ten years at least. Oh no, he got he made seventy million last year. But <laughs> the, thing, yeah. the yeah. thing about it is, this isn't something that happened every once in a while. My guess is it happened all the time. Right. And yeah. if we know of twelve, my guess is the actual numbers. Are, are in the triple digits, if not more. I was telling Joseph today, though, that I did a story for UrbanDaddy.com about interviewing women psychiatrists about why powerful men do this, knowing yes. how it could, I mean, look, it could mess up your career. Yes. Even though they're incredibly powerful and nobody talked, but why wouldn't they just call a hooker, you know, or a beautiful call girl? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> Because it's, it's about, about power. power. It's about yeah. power. Oh. It's about power. And it becomes a habit, too. Well, like yes, you said, it's you know? addicting. Yeah, exactly. It's addicting. Well, that's what you were saying, but you, there were other points really quickly in that you were saying in your article. So it was like, there was, she interviewed like four different psychologists about why they do, and it was like, they were nerds in high school. Mm-hmm. Getting back at women. Getting back at women. Then it was like, probably not that attractive, so abusing like, and then what was like the third? It was it about was, testosterone, and tes- when you think of why men become go to the top, it's their competitive urges. And that, you know, it's science. They've proven the fact that the men who get to the top are driven by having more testosterone. Men, uh, okay, I'm a little okay. less, I'm a little apprehensive about that one. I, I'm a man and I know plenty of men who would never dare yeah, do something like this. Yeah. Of course they would. Of course they would. I'm not saying all I don't think it's saying it all, but just in, in, in studies and just sort of a psychologist it's sort a of. It's a bit of an explanation. And therefore, <sighs> testosterone makes men competitive. And they obviously outcompeted everybody. I can tell you my testosterone levels are pretty high. I've never in a million years would have thought. No, thought you're not going to cross my mind. Yeah, yeah. And you probably got laid when you wanted to. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, look at you. Come on. (laughs) Too snap. As we digress, (laughs) it's completely wrong. It is. Um, So, so this whole thing, though. Now, the other question that that remains is. There was also in the article Jeff Fager, who yep. runs, because basically it's all about the actual culture that he's ran now at CBS, because now you're talking about all the different ranks. Jeff Fager's now been accused again. Again. Mm-hmm. And this, so, one, this one is on the record now, and this one, right? There was an intern who yes. said that, yes, she, 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 she. Yeah, yeah was, apparently that culture at 60 Minutes before was, it was ugly. Before, I think it was like 19 women who had told Ronan Farrow that he, yes. that he that, that women were afraid of, of being around him during parties because he got too drunk and handsy. Yeah. This one is an actual story about someone who's complaining about it, and it's coming after those 19 allegations. Uh, right now, uh, I, I think because go. Les Moonves is, yeah. is is at the center of attention right now, he's he's a little protected by that, but not by much. But I don't know if he's going to survive. But that's the thing that's really week. been interesting about this, because Les Moonves being such a huge figure in Hollywood, that Jeff Baker has managed to stay under the radar as a footnote in the story. It's like and Jared and Trump. That's what I'm saying. But but it's like... Here's the thing. <laughs> and this is what I want to see. I want to see what happens next week. Uh you remember when the first uh, story came out? Yeah. And they went over to, to they spoke to Leslie Stahl, and Leslie oh Stahl defended. Yes, defended. Essentially him. said she that she, she essentially said that she thinks that that to describe the culture at 60 Minutes as unwelcoming to women is not true. So it'll be interesting to see. How many other women are on that show? I just th- yeah exactly. It'll be interesting to see what how she she has to sort of now sort of explain her her defense. And, and what she's going to say next week about Yeah, this. it still just plays into this whole thing, like, 
we in our jobs haven't even been at the level that these people are necessarily like within their networks like Leslie Stahl is like the uh, and you're sort of like we knew about Matt Lauer. I was like a lowly, like a, you know, um, producer at the time, and it's like I remember being at NBC in here. Then you're telling me that these co-hosts, these women that would sit next to them on a daily basis, didn't get an inkling of of gossip Everyone in their ear. Knew that's about what I'm saying. So that's why Everyone knew. So when you know that as a person who's like an insider in Hollywood and you know better, it's only worse. It's like don't even make a statement. Just right. just let just be quiet because you're you're gonna have egg on your face. And like I want to know, like is Julie Chen when she said I fully support my husband? Did she really believe that? Did she not know about all We're of these? I other? think when you're Probably married to people, you, you you you're a deep denial about how. Yes. To, yeah. yeah. Julie Chen was very quick to denounce other men who have been accused of sexual misconduct and saying that they should step down. But when it came to her husband, she said, "I'm only saying this once. I support my husband, and I'm not going to talk about this again." Period. Which doesn't mean she didn't know, or she doesn't think he did it. What yeah. I want right. to know is here's what I want to. I'm curious. He must have known this was going to happen. I mean, when the Me Too movement started in October, he launched this <clears throat> lawsuit against Sherry Redstone yes. in May. That's the most... Which is like seven months into the Me Too movement. Yes. What were you thinking? Or how how much... Uh, 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 on a, uh, like, how, how could you have... Pick God that time to, for another big battle, knowing that you God might be exposed. Complex. God complex. Yeah. I'm telling you, it gets to the point in Hollywood, and it needs to stop. It's like these. He men, was a god. They, they, well, he was a god in, in yes, in television, right? Yes. For what he accomplished, and um, hugely powerful. But you've got to stay grounded, people. Like Harvey Weinstein, they just think that they're untouchable. Money will get them out of anything. You know what? They, Donald they Trump. Were, yeah. And for many years, it's, they it's, were. It's, it's like I think people underestimated this movement. I can tell you that when that first story came out. And Leslie Moonves, uh, and the board. Remember, the board convened. It came out on a Friday, and on Monday the board convened. And when they convened after their big meeting, they came out with a statement saying he is going to stay on, yeah. and that's all we're saying right now until the investigation is over. Which and let's everyone mention started. That the board is like uh, predominantly male men in their set, white men in their seventies. Mm, a lot of them are are less yeah. Moonves, are less Moonves loyalists. Okay. Loyalists, but. They were essentially saying, we're not firing him, he's going to stay on until the investigation is over. And I remember a lot of people were talking about how maybe, because it was the first time someone had been accused yeah. and weren't immediately fired or let go. And, and uh, everyone level, was already writing like the obit for the B2 movement saying, oh, it's, yeah, it's losing its it steam, blah, blah, point. blah. Well, I think people have, are, now, are now taking that back. Well, time's up to their credit has now come back in because we were like when we first launched Meet the Hollywood Press a lot of the discussion was around like is that still happening like is Time's Up still around so yes. when we bring up we do we have, have their the statement tweet. right yeah Elena. they actually came out this uh, this afternoon with a uh, statement here's the full statement all right Six more women have made bone-chilling allegations of abuse, harassment, and retaliation against Les Moonves. We believed them. We believe them. These new allegations are in addition to the previous six women who have already bravely spoken out and de in detailed horrific behavior from Moonves. Nineteen current and former CBS employees also allege that former CBS News Chairman Jeff Fager condones sexual harassment in his division. These allegations speak to a culture of toxic complicity at CBS, where the safety of women and continu continuously were continuously ignored to protect the careers of powerful men and the corporation. The CBS Board of Directors has an obligation to move swiftly and decisively to create safe work environment for all and rid the company of this toxic culture. CBS and Rid the company of themselves. Of themselves right after. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like actually rid themselves. Uh, yeah. It's they like, let it happen. Go, but continue, because mm -hmm. that's interesting Absolutely. that they're trying to say, put this board responsible for cleaning up the mess, but mm -hmm. go ahead. CBS, as you sit in a boardroom debating the next steps to rectify the damage done, remember that the world is watching. We will accept nothing less than full transparency of the investigation's finding, a commitment to real change across all levels of CBS management and no reward for Les Moonves. And by the way, Time's Up, and for anyone who doesn't know, is like all of pa like the biggest power player women yeah. in Hollywood. Jessica like Chastain, Reese Witherspoon. Oprah Spoon. Winfrey. Um, I mean, this is like, this is backed by... Oh, don't like, forget, CAA is behind it. Uh, exactly. Yeah, a lot of the right. agencies, which is uh, problematic for a lot of people from the Me Too movement because they feel like some of those agencies were very complicit in, complicit in, in sending behavior. some of these actresses of to Harvey Weinstein's, you know. Hollywood needs just a big top-to-down enema, 
of like all of this and mostly just the men that run it are just like repla- like it is it's going through that enema it's called Ronan Farrow Ronan Farrow yes <laughs> it's like Ronan Farrow is like Robin Hood. He's like the only one that's basically been able to like change the culture of well, but it's not changing fast enough. As Can far you as win two Pulitzers back to back? Because I think this is probably one of his second yeah. Pulitzer. My old boss Richard Rushville on Twitter and uh, had tweeted earlier too, and he had said, "Oh, I'm sure now that Les Moonves is like out of power, that now all the uh, Hollywood people that know he's not in power are going to get grandstand on." And it is true. It's like I love it how after he's out now. Everyone, start, where were your right. balls before that? Like two weeks ago, when like you already could have drawn an opinion, or where were they uh, years ago when you knew stuff you like this was happening? You could make a comparison to the Republican Party and the Trump cabinet that <sighs> nobody's saying anything except anonymously, mm-hmm. and that you know when the tide turns, they're all going yep. to turn. Going to turn. I think CBS is going to have a lot of explaining to do <clears throat> after this because not only did they know about those accusations because of the fact that it was investigated by the LAPD. Yes. And the only reason it wasn't, you know, it didn't go forward was because of the statute Statute of limitations, limitations. which is a very sort of... Why you know, that's not re- doing though something to like change that. Like, why is no one? There's been to, like, a lot of debate about that, especially from the Me Too movement. People are very angry about the fact that a lot of these men will be walking just because of the fact that, you know, it takes a while for. We're now starting to understand sexual uh, trauma, sexual abuse trauma, and, and realizing that even today, even now, after all of these men who've been toppled including Les Moonves. Yes. There are still so many women who are afraid to come forward. It is a chilling sort of effect on someone's psyche. And I think that that's, there's going to be a lot of debate over this statute of limitations. Well, you know, there is this thing where when someone rapes you, abuses you, that part of your logic goes away and you assume that you, you are guilty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You take that on. Any final thoughts on Les before we move on to our next uh, topic? I don't believe he's getting no money. I, I don't believe think he's so getting either. severely cut money. I think he won't be able to get any money publicly that or, we know. Or, uh, that, that we, we know. know. I think they're going to wait until even it blows if he makes, over. I think right now the anger is so it, it, it's such a high level right now that if he gets a golden parachute, CBS will have to deal with not just um, not just the public uh, a backlash, but also lawsuits because of this. You're the right. board will be sued as well. I so. just had a thought. The Emmys are in a week. Yeah. Is anyone, luckily, the host is not from CBS, but is this going to be addressed? Are they going to make jokes? I can't imagine um, it won't be. Um, yeah, of course yeah. they will. Yeah. They, they have Harvey. to. Remember how Jimmy Kimmel started the, uh, like, like, let's stress the elephant in the room yes. or something? Literally. He was very began. smart. He was smart about that. Uh, they would have to. Yeah. Because, you know, like, Corden and having, like, uh, Colbert. Especially because yeah, of Colbert. CBS. Yeah. I mean, CBS network, and the like, Emmys, it's not even like the Oscars where you can, you can argue that it's TV versus, right. you know, movies. I still say that I feel more disturbed by the Jeff Fager stuff because of the fact that the reporting was that he was actually trying to, uh, like, a, 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 a producer of a, of, a story, right. of, a, of a show that's supposed to be uncovering the truth was yes. trying to squash stories about this. Mm-hmm. That's more offensive to me. You know, Ronan, keep doing your thing. Yeah, oh, I'm not talking to Ronan. Keep doing it. Keep yeah. doing. Don't ever stop. You <laughs> probably won't. Okay, so moving on to, um, I, I, it's not even fun fair. It's more like fair. So New York, 